Now on 12, we're in Midwood to witness the grand opening of a new pizza place in their neighborhood. We got more on what you can expect. Plus, chaos on the dance floor of a party boat, a fight breaking out and turning bloody. See video from inside the ships when fists started flying. And Passover happens every year, but this one is a first one for a local Shabbat. See that and more as News 12 Brooklyn starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us here on News 12 Brooklyn, where local matters. I'm Brittany Cadet. A new pizzeria is serving up slices kosher. News 12's Daniela Rodriguez joins us from Midwood with more on how they're serving their community. Daniela. That's right, Brittany. It's a great day to be me. I'm here at Florencia's in Midwood, and they just opened their doors to the neighborhood last week. And their menu is so special because it's all kosher, and they're even offering gluten-free options. We love Florencia! The kids here love Florencia, as you can tell, and we're told the restaurant is always full. If you're a law enforcement officer or you're a first responder, you'll always get 25% off. Owner Joseph Azizo has been serving the community here and in other areas of Brooklyn for more than 25 years, and he says he is so happy to bring his passion for kosher food right here to Midwood. We have a huge variety. We have over 30 different topping pies every single day. We do have a full kitchen menu. We have sandwiches, we have pastas, we have salads, obviously we have fries, appetizers. We have a very big menu and we do catering, we do catering, we, and whatever we could, we do school accounts. And they'll be closed for the next six days because of Passover, but they say they can't wait to get back to serving the community after the religious observation. For now, I am going to enjoy the slice. That's the latest here in Midwood. Daniela Rodriguez, News 12. Thanks, Daniela. Over 1,000 new police recruits will be starting their training this year. That's on top of the 1,200 already being trained as city officials look to put more officers on the streets and in our subways. It's part of efforts by Mayor Eric Adams to double down on what he says is an ongoing reduction in crime, especially with shootings. He adds training even more officers than originally planned will help keep that trend going down. All this puts New York City on the path to have a total of 35,000 police officers, uniform officers in the coming year. We're getting those numbers back up to the numbers that we believe is needed to continue our success. That means tens of thousands of police officers will be on our streets, our subway system, and create a safer environment for our city. Mayor Adams says many of those recruits being trained now will hit the streets by the start of 2025. Switching gears now, a dead body was found at a playground this morning. Police now trying to figure out who and how. Police say someone reported the body just before 9 this morning at the Crispus Atticus playground. When first responders got there, they say the boy was already dead. And from what they can tell, there were no signs of physical trauma, meaning, meaning no obvious evidence pointing to how he died. The investigation is in its early stages, but will continue to bring you the updates as they come in. That's the DJ yelling for this fight to end on a Brooklyn boat party yesterday where multiple people ended up stabbed. This was yesterday evening at around 530 at the Brooklyn Army Terminal. We're now getting this new look at when it all started in the middle of the crowd of people. Some screaming and pushing to get out of the way and eventually you can see security taking someone out. But the fight continued and escalated outside. You can see how violent it got in the witness video. One person stomping on a man's head while he was on the ground. That man's white shirt stained with blood. A security guard trying to break up the fight. Right now, it's unclear how many people were involved, but at least three people were stabbed. It's really horrible. We came out here to have a great event, and it's very unfortunate. You know, there's a lot of money lost this evening. Police say multiple victims were taken to the hospital. We're still waiting to hear back about their condition. As of right now, nobody has been arrested. And let's take a look outside. It was a little breezy out. Will it continue? Let's bring in a Stormwatch team's Skylar Day Harmon with more on what we can expect. Skylar, is it going to continue being windy or is it going to stop? 
We're going to see a reduction in wind as we get into parts of the overnight and into our Monday. It's not totally gone, but it's going to get better. But the good news is, is that we're not only dry through our day today or the rest of our evening, really, and overnight. We're dry through Monday and also through Tuesday. And then Wednesday is going to bring that return of that rain, unfortunately. But we have a beautiful start to the work and school week to enjoy until then. So we're happy. It's a little chilly overnight. We're going to see those temperatures dropping into the lower 40s but it's going to be all in all very pleasant. So as far as that's looking, those lower 40s, we're looking at 42 in Flatbush, 42 in Greenpoint, 43 in Coney Island. It's going to be a chilly overnight. There's not a whole lot of wind, really, but around 5 miles per hour, so we're seeing a lessening in that. Our Monday, we could see wind around 10 miles per hour with some gusts up around 15 miles per hour, so not a huge, huge deal. As far as what we're looking at temperature-wise, look at these. These are beautiful 60 degrees all around Coney Island. Island at 60 degrees, Bergen Beach at 60 degrees, East New York seeing 61. It's going to be a stunning day. We start sunny where the mid part of the day is sunny. The rest of the evening is sunny and then it's a clear overnight and our Tuesday as well is sunny. So we're going to be seeing a nice cloud free Monday night. Temperatures very similar to what we're expecting for our overnight tonight. So very consistent on that front, but we're going to be seeing 43 in East New York, 42 in Bergen Beach. It's going to be chilly again and still not a whole lot of wind. So we will take that and we will talk about when that rain returns in just a few minutes. Thanks, Skylar. Visitation Academy is ending its 170 year legacy serving girls in the community. Now parents are trying to keep the doors open. Back in February, they were told the school was closing after this semester without any warning. Many tell us they had heard rumors that the school had low enrollment and funding issues, but nothing was confirmed until two months ago. It's like little angels. How could you do that to these little angels? Rip them apart from their school. What, what, can, what can be done? We don't want to hear no. We reached out to Visitation Academy and we were redirected to the Diocese of Brooklyn and they tell us the decision to close the school was made by the Sisters of the Visitation of Holy Mary in Brooklyn who operate the school. They also said their decision came down to financials, adding that the diocese will be working with current students to transition to a new school. A landlord is fighting to evict a squatter in Park Slope while also fighting pancreatic cancer. Nadia Galindo has the story. Since September, Thomas Wooding has been hospitalized 10 times, fighting stage 4 pancreatic cancer. At the same time, he's still fighting to evict a tenant who he claims is now a squatter. Wooding says he's not received rent on his 4th Avenue condo in Park Slope since June 2023. I made so many impassioned pleas to please vacate my unit. She refuses. The Woodings say this tenant has lived here for more than 10 years, but she stopped paying rent after they raised it from $1,600 a month to $1,750. The rent is well below the market value of one bedrooms in the area that go for more than $3,000 a month. We attempted to speak with the tenant. Nobody came to the door. We did find the tenant's attorney. The firm pointed out the civil case to evict her was dismissed. Case got dismissed on technicality. Thomas's wife, Madalena Wooding, explains the case was dismissed because they did not serve the tenant a piece of paper. She wasn't served some kind of order that was set in place during the pandemic that we didn't know about and the court clerk didn't give it to me. Now they're back at square one. They just served the tenant a new 90 day notice of termination and have had to hire an attorney. She gets free legal counsel and we don't. Throughout this nearly year long process, they've been paying a mortgage and common charges on the condo. For Thomas, a father of two, he says it's been financially and emotionally draining. His message to the squatter. I'm begging you. Making an impassion plea. Please vacate my unit. I would greatly appreciate it so that I could get a paying tenant in there so that my family could stay afloat financially. In Park Slope, Nadia Galindo, News 12. Thank you, Nadia. Passover is just about to start, and Jewish Brooklynites are already prepping for the holiday. Plus, we're in Clinton Hill to see how they're doing that in the wake of the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. Plus, today is the last day to get drinks at a popular bar in Williamsburg after they say they're going out of business. See why they're closing their doors. 
and it's been feeling cold lately, but will it last? Don't worry, Skylar will be back with the answers and your 10 day forecast when News 12 Brooklyn returns. Flatbush, you're watching News 12 Brooklyn. Local matters.